So what is the difference between an old pivot style and a new pivot style? We are gonna take a look today at what a single axis rotation is. So how the modern tour players are rotating these days and compare it to how players in the 80s and going into the 90s used to move and see what difference that can make to your game. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. We've got loads of content on this channel to help your game. This is all about helping you lower your scores. If you look back through the channel, there's loads of other content with other areas of swing covered. So to make sure you don't miss out on it, make sure you subscribe to the videos. On to today's video, we are gonna be looking at what is the difference between a modern golf swing, so it's one that you've seen a lot of the tour players have currently, to what we saw the likes of Sebi Ballesteros and players in the 80s and 90s using. And one of the differences is single axis of rotation. What the heck does that actually mean though, you're probably asking, is well, we're talking about rotation here. So not moving off the golf ball. So a double axis of rotation would see that your weight is moving across over your right leg a long, long way. So you're shifting way more from pivot point to pivot point. Now, this doesn't mean that you aren't shifting weight here, by the way, guys, because give you an idea here is that when we're turning around a single axis, okay, so that you're not moving your head off the ball in effect, you're still moving weight over to this right hand side because if I just make a turn here, so this is a loaded turn with some coil, okay, what I can then do is as soon as I put my arms up, that shifts mass across. And then, then I add the club onto it, I pull my mass further across. So we know through the use of force plates that if we load in this manner, you're still getting over 70% of your actual physical weight over your right hand side. Okay, so, but so you don't need to be shifting across like this. And also, you're rotating from your back. Okay, so that is the bit you're turning around. So you've got more mass in front of your spine. So that mass is also shifting across, which is therefore shifting that weight across. This, but the big thing is, this is gonna make you much, much more consistent. What would have happened is, if you have always been a person who shifted from foot to foot like this, it can lead to be needing a lot of timing issues. So we talk about having to have a high level of coordination in terms of being able to time the release of the club and the arms into the ball at impact. Whereas if you're rotating around a more central position, you're still loading weight over, but from here, very easy to be back over that left side, get more compression and get a lot, lot more speed. So this is a thing that is absolutely vital to what you see the modern tour player doing. Now, in terms of being able to apply this, what we want to do, we want to be aware of where the weight's moving across the feet, first of all. So, you could use an alignment stick, you know, through the middle of your foot, just as a reference point. Okay, so you could stand on it to, to then, you know, I'll just do it as an example of how you do it here with this golf shaft. If I've got that right through the middle of the foot here, if the weight goes over, so you'll probably go over the outside of it because you haven't got anything stable. If you're loading through the middle, you should be able to still see that the weight's going through the middle of the foot. The big bit here from when we're focusing on this lower body now will be what's happening to the hips. So if I give you the reference here, if that's where the right hip starts, imagine there's a wall against that right hip here at address. As I go and load back now, this will go straight back. And then once I get to the top here and it gets an extra load, there'll be a little bit of daylight here between where it started and where it's ended up. If it stays on the line, that's perfect as well but ideally just a tiny bit of daylight, not much, because we don't want to shift too much in this direction. And we don't ever want to see it going through because that's gonna mean that everything's shifting across. The next reference point, so that's the lower half covered. That's the hip, where the hips are moving and where the weight's moving across the feet. The next bit's gonna be what's happening to the, you know, your back and what's happening to your head. So the head can move a tiny little bit, okay? But it's going to be more of a rotational move. It won't be a huge lateral move. If it laterally moves across, you've got to laterally move back. So what we want to do is imagine that as you're loading, that the left shoulder isn't much behind the ball at the top. So if we get ourselves an address here, there's a, there's a golf ball for the right ball position for me. Now make the turn. 
and that's just behind the ball. So if I close my eye, I can see that it's literally just behind the ball there. So that means I'm staying on it. If I move a long way off, so I've got it all the way over here, I've got too much weight displaced over that right foot. We don't, you've got to make sure that that stick gets a minimum to the back edge of the golf ball. If you have got it there, now it's at the front edge, my weight's definitely over this front foot and that's leading into a reverse pivot. So it's, it's a fine line here, but it's going to be about at least this much difference, which will be quite significant in the role of where your weight's going to be moving. So we know for a fact that what we're going to be trying to do is feel that the right hip turns back, we load into the floor and the left, and then you wind the upper body up and don't move off it too much with the head. You get these things and then what you're going to be able to do is make that downswing where you can very quickly shift over that left side and then unwind around. But like I said, the big thing is, it's the coordination issues, but it's also where people are going to be able to get more power on a more consistent basis because effectively, you're using the floor for some power. People talk about ground force reaction. So you're loading into the floor, and then as you're able to unwind through the shot, you're able to use that stored energy from the floor to give you club head speed. Yes, the, the two, you know, the two pivot mo movement to two axis motion can deliver a lot of power, but it's gonna give some timing issues. Let's give it a bit of a go. So the idea is gonna be, get myself set up into really solid address position, Feel the weight, stay through the middle of the foot. And then from here, focus that we don't, we're not going to move off the golf ball much with that upper body. We feel like I stay really, really centered. So the, the beauty of being able to go back and through like this is that everything's moving around the spine. I'm not shifting from side to side. And this is gonna help you deliver the club head back to the ball on a really, really consistent basis and make a huge difference to not only your strike, but the levels of consistency you can have in your game. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, comment below on some other subjects you'd like covering to help you get lower scores and get more enjoyment out of the game. As always, thanks for watching and talk with you again soon.